Still to share something from the clarification of terms. This one's titled Forgiveness, the Face of Christ. It starts off by saying forgiveness is for God and toward God, but not of him. It is impossible to think of anything he created that could need forgiveness. Forgiveness then is an illusion, but because of its purpose, which is the Holy Spirit's, it has one difference. Unlike all other illusions, it leads away from error and not towards it. It leads away from error and not towards it. So this is all about awakening from the mistake, about letting go of the belief that something has gone wrong, coming back to what's always been waiting there behind the story. Yeah, I don't feel to read much more of this section right now, but you may want to. It's it's number three in the clarification of terms. It's very helpful. <laughs> Again, showing us that forgiveness isn't needed in heaven. There's nothing is needed in heaven. <laughs> but for those of us who still think we have needs, forgiveness is our need. <laughs> so this is the moment. This is always the moment. <laughs> the moment where something shifts and falls away. We don't even always have to understand what it is. But we can know that we want happiness. We want joy. And if what is here is not happiness and joy, we can know that we don't want that then. A little bit further in this section, Jesus talks about the face of Christ, which is not a literal face. I mean, it could be experienced that way, but it's really just to see the pure innocence in everyone we interact with. And that's how we come to know it's what we are too. So really he's asking, why wouldn't you want to see that? <laughs> wouldn't you want to see innocence everywhere you look? That's the opportunity. And if we really come to see everyone we meet as a mirror in some way, some way they're showing us something about ourselves, then really as we see this innocence in everyone, we are coming to see that that's what we are. I remember years ago when Donald Trump was, was running for president. Oh, wait, he's doing that again. <laughs> but when he was first running for president, it was definitely, you know, uh, causing a lot of upset among pretty much everyone I knew who weren't, weren't a fan of him. And I said to my friend, I said, I love Donald Trump. And I, I said it because 
I was forgiving him. <laughs> I was forgiving the upsets around every crazy thing he was doing. And I knew that that was the only way to see the truth in, in me, to experience the truth, experience that face of Christ. And he loved telling that story because <laughs> he had such an issue with Trump, but to see that, yeah, that could be the experience. I don't want to withhold love from Donald Trump because I don't want to withhold love from myself. And maybe we have another name we put on the list or maybe a bunch of names. But the only time you can make that choice is now. Whoever's on your list, whoever you don't currently see the face of Christ in, You know, this practice really transforms our experience because we realize that that gate, that gateway to heaven is right now. And whatever we're doing, wherever we're going, it's always right now. Whoever comes to my mind, do I see them with perfect innocence? Because that's how I experience innocence in myself. That's what I want. sort of feels a little electric <laughs> because we we start to get the, the power that this moment holds I want that innocence now. I want to feel that and know that in myself now. Um, as I hear you talk about this, I feel so clearly that this all comes down to who am I? Because I couldn't forgive anyone or anything if I believe I'm just a human being. I think it's like a... gradual, you know, like... You forgive and you realize a little more who you are. Like it's a step by step for most of us. But unless you let go of self concept, I couldn't forgive. I just see it in my own life. If I was this person that came from this family that had this type of upbringing and this, all these types of experiences. If, if that was who I truly am, I would be trapped. It feels very um, refreshing. Realize, you know, we, we are actually not these concepts, these, it's like, yeah, 
conditions, conditionings that we have been through. Does anyone want to open up or lay something down? Well, I'll lay fear down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My constant, <Thank> almost companion. <laughs> it's not a good friend. No, not a good friend. <laughs> I have some days where I get up in the morning and I feel fine and I'm calm and my day just, you know, goes from one thing to the next. And then this morning I wake up and I have this, and there, there was no trigger. Like I can't find a trigger for it. And I just wake up and I feel this little sense of kind of apprehension, this, this a bit of anxiety, and it just kind of starts to increase as my morning, you know, as I'm doing my morning stuff. And, and it's just this feeling in my body you know, and I, and I'm trying to figure out, I, I go into this kind of panic, almost in a way of trying to figure out what is, what's the trigger, you know, where's, where, where's this coming from? And then I start, I almost feel this pressure to try and figure it out, to get it, what it is. And then that just seems to, I think that just seems to compound it for me in a, in a, in a way, because, because I've, Sometimes I think if I don't figure out where it's coming from, I'm not going to be able to let it go. It's always going to keep coming up in my face. And all right, not even in my face. I mean, it's just in, it's just me. I just feel it. And, you know, I went out and took the dog out and we had a nice walk this morning and, and, um, and this feeling just, it just, it just came with me the whole time. And, <laughs> And, and I'm doing the lesson today, today, today's lesson, you know, God is my, my strength and, and or whatever, I can't even think of it now, but I'm carrying the lesson with me and, and, and trying to just trying to be with my morning and trying to enjoy my walk. And, and, uh, and then it just seems to be this struggle in mind of of forgiving it and just laying it down and just letting it go and 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 yet it just still seems to be there it's tagging them on, tagging them on tapping me on the shoulder going don't forget about me <laughs> I'm still here and and uh and I got in the you know we had our walk and then I got we got back in the car and 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 I started driving home and I start crying in the car. And, and then I, I'm getting self-conscious because I don't want anybody to see me crying. And I, I still don't know what it's about. I mean, I could feel some relief. You know, like a pressure valve after I, after I allowed some tears while I was in the car. <sighs> but it, it just, it's like, when is it ever gonna stop? How often, how long is this gonna go on for? <sighs> yeah. You know what else to say? It's just, it, it just feels so debilitating sometimes. I wanna hide from the world. It's like just this feeling that I can't quite figure out sometimes how to, how to be with this experience, how to be in this world. And, and I just, I just want to hide from it because I don't want people to see me. I don't want people to. Yeah. There was a session where the, it was talked about about this fear of, of present joining. And I I know that comes up for me because I don't, I'm afraid of what people might see of who I really am, that I'm not, 
you know, that I'm not good enough, that I'm not whatever, that I'm lacking in some way. Yeah. yeah, I think this is all great, Susan. And I get this, I go into this panic and then my body starts to shake and my hands shake and my voice shakes and, and then I get embarrassed because of that and just like, oh God, it's just exhausting sometimes. In the mind, I mean, it just, it's just like, oh. There's times in my life where I just wanted to curl up and crawl under a bed and disappear. Because mm. everything just felt so overwhelming. Not wanting the responsibility for thinking, figuring things out. And just I'm going to get it wrong somehow. <laughs> But then not trusting my own, my own uh, ability to, to connect into inner guidance and know that that guidance is the right guidance because I'm just going to get it wrong somehow. Yeah, I don't think any of this is wrong, Susan. I think you were just ready for this to heal. Oh, I am ready. <laughs> and I think, you know, you were talking about trying to understand or you know, figure out where it comes from. And I think that's it. You were just ready to heal. You were just ready to undo this, all this you've been carrying in you. Yeah. I feel like I'm. what's coming to mind right now is a, a spring that's just wound so tight and it's starting to unravel and it just goes twang sometimes with it. And I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. That feels good. Let all that pressure loosen. Yeah. And allowing and allowing for myself to not have to figure out what it is. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's it not not even mine. Like I'll I'll look at I'll watch myself. I'll be the observer, you know, looking at myself being upset like this and thinking, well, that's where it's not even mine. It must be somebody, it must be somebody else's upset. I'm I'm releasing for them because they're not doing it. So I'm doing it for them. I don't know. It's just uh, uh and even that you don't have to figure out. I mean, if you're no, experiencing it, you can let it move through. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine talks about rather than feeling like we have to let something go, which can almost feel um, a bit of a letdown when we still have that feeling with us and or it keeps coming up rather than letting it go just um, taking it into our heart, loving it. You know, like a little child that's upset about something. You don't say, well, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to let you go. You know, you give them a big hug. And, and sometimes I find that will help. That actually helps if I try that approach rather than feeling like I have to let it go as though it's some evil aspect of myself that I don't want. And I would just add to that, you know, if you've done that, I think a lot of us have had the thought, oh, now I'm done with that. You know, after a healing or after a release, we, we think now I'm done with that. I would encourage you to, to not have to think that either. Let, let that thought go. Because like you said, it might come back up again and then you would feel bad. Oh, it's still here. But if if we don't make that determination, if we just allow whatever is here in each moment to move through, then if it comes back once or 500 times, you know, it doesn't really matter. We're just healing what's what's showing up in the moment.
can let go of some of the performance anxiety around the, the healing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it sounds great that you cried in the car when you drove. <laughs> <laughs> I wished I had tinted glasses on <laughs> glass on the windows because you know I just so so aware of is anybody seeing me cry in the car, but <laughs> Yeah, I knew I needed, needed to let some of it up anyway. It was coming whether I wanted it to or not. Yeah, I bet no one saw you. And even if they did, that's fine. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good example. You know, to allow it up. Yeah. Thank you. That feels good. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes we talk about the process of, of how many tears there are, you know. And I've cried and cried and cried about different things over and over again. So, you know, there are those times where it seems like it's just going to keep on going and going. But at some point it starts to wind down or an issue that's been a long recurring thing starts to just disappear from our experience so yeah i think we can give ourselves huge permission to feel whatever we feel and to not put any limits or ideas of how long it should take or shouldn't take or you know Yeah, I need to do that because there's just this expectation in my mind that I feel like I should be further along with all the practice I've done. And then, of course, I do myself an injustice by putting expectations, wanting it to look a certain way. Yeah, I, I was just talking with someone who was going through some pretty tough stuff. And I I said, you know, what you're going through is perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. It's the perfect opportunity for you on your healing path. Yeah, that's all it is. It's a perfect opportunity to see what's in the mind. When when I started this whole journey with the course and 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 the healing opportunities that would come up. And initially I used to get quite, um, I used to get almost excited about it. It's like, oh great, there's something <laughs> for me to look at, right? But I need to work through, thank you. You know, thank you for the gift. But as time's got on, <laughs> there's times where it just feels a little wearying hmm. initially. And then I, you know, and then as I work it through, I can feel the gift in it, so. Yeah. And if there's weariness there, you, you just let that be the next thing you practice forgiveness with. <laughs> you know, my list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Sometimes... It can feel like the more it is, the more it is. Like the deeper <laughs> we go, or the more yeah. it is to heal. Like, but we are expanding. We are gaining clarity. Yeah. We're seeing further. Yeah. Well, as we as we forgive one thing, it makes room for something else to come in. Exactly. <laughs> What was underneath comes up. Yeah. But there is a there is a bottom to that, you know. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> yeah. There is a there is a finish line, you know. Yeah. We don't when we're done. So yeah. It's not it's not eternal, eternal process. <laughs> It's going to end.
in eternal life. Yeah. Oh, one of the paths I was on before I, I got into the course, they said that. They said, oh, you just keep healing forever. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> healing forever. There's always something more. That was I was like, oh. When I got to the course and I realized that wasn't the case, that was such a relief. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I can laugh about it too. <laughs> yeah. Had some good cries behind the steering wheel. So, <laughs> it's pretty good when you drive. You can also scream. You know, nobody <laughs> hears if you're in the car. That's or makes noise. I've done that a few times. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> a few more hands. That's true. <laughs> I had a friend that she had kids and she felt like she didn't have a space to scream, you know, she's trying to get it out. So she, she would scream underwater at the pool when they went to the pool. <laughs> she really let it out. No one could hear. <laughs> Thanks for invented ways. <laughs> Okay, any anything else want to be raised up? Um the the beginning of the session reminded me of the to the lesson I'm doing today that God is my strength in which I trust. And in the lesson he asks us to look at our fears and then to go deeper underneath. And to you know to find the the real strength of peace and to listen to the voice for God. And the fear, one of the fears that I fear, I, I, one of the fears is in my relationship with Solvay, um, in, in being caught in reaction with her um, being caught in my anger or hatred or blame injustice righteousness all whole load of stuff um, that my fear is that I Uh, my fear is not remembering, not going to the peace, not that it's not enough. And I don't know how to make it stop. And I, I want to. I really hate it <laughs> when we argue. That's good. You say you really want to, you know. I feel desperate about it, actually. I feel mm. really unhappy. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is to take it back to what it is in the moment, you know? What is it that you react to in that moment? And instead of taking it to her, take it within. Take it with God. You know, if you really want to let it go, because it is something in your mind. It is a belief. She's a bouncing board. She's a reflection or a mirror. And so you see right there what it is. And if you really want to let it go, you may say to her, excuse me, I'm going to go look at this. And maybe you do often, you know, but remember, it's just what it is there in the moment. It's not 10 more things on top, or it's not what was there yesterday or what's there tomorrow. It's what's there in that moment. Then it's actually doable. To deal with that. I mean, you may not even need to go away. It can be so quick. If you say, God, you are the strength that I trust in. This stuff that is up right now, help me see, help me release it. You may need to name the specific upset, not to Solway, but to God. Yeah, so it is a little detective work, you know, when you have, you may need to detect what it is that you believe in that moment. It, it um, feels almost... It's just the injustice feels all-consuming in some way. And I don't even really know what that is. I just... Okay, so maybe you need to take this feeling of injustice, this belief that you are unfairly treated. That's what it is, injustice. Take that and say to the Holy Spirit, please let me see this differently. Let me see what this really is. Retranslate this for me. Because injustice doesn't exist in God. So what is it then? This feels so many almost primal places in me, like I'm not seen. You don't know who I am. Or um, when I feel blamed and I want to defend mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and these, are, these are the things you cannot get from her. Because you're locked in, in the lack of I am not seen. Yeah. And it's such a strong belief, so she's going to re reflect the opposite, most likely, <laughs> until you have gone within with it, until you have taking care of it actually it's like you need to take care of it with the holy spirit yeah. i mean i have gone in within i have gone in with it but i haven't i mean it it's very intense i haven't by a long way feels like i've healed it um and i feel i it feels i don't know what to do in the meantime, I don't know. I know. I carry that in my heart, in my in my mind. In yeah. Way. And at the same time, try to be present without. No, you don't have to pretend. What is there is there. And that's your calling. You know, look straight at fear. Look straight at the belief in injustice, journal about it, go for a walk with the Holy Spirit, talk about it, process it, 
you know, allow it up, allow it to move through and question and use the course because the course has so many excellent ways of bringing, of helping you, you know, like uh, I'm thinking of these, all these teachings around relationship, like have you um, appreciated your brother, you know, have you overlooked all his mistakes? Um, the way the Holy Spirit does, you know. No, or, you know, I I have all those judgments. That... Yeah, exactly. So he's saying that, or have you have you blamed him for everything that you see <laughs> is wrong in him? You know, so it's this either or. So it is the willingness to see differently, and you will have massive heavenly help to mm -hmm. see it differently. I mean, if it, if it was just me, I, you know, it's like both of us, it feels to me, are both. It is just you. And no, I, yeah. I know, but it it <laughs> just becomes a very intense experience. It's like yeah. there's no refuge. There's no, you know, I need, I do, if I do go off, then Solvay isn't happy about that. So. It is just you. It is just you. You need to do it with your mind, you know. That's the way you need to see it. If you see it interpersonal, you're lost. Because already then there is okay. a blame or, um, you know, okay, but she's going to do it too, or, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because I have been getting dispirited and then... Yesterday, I just felt I spent quite a lot of time with that. And actually, I just got to a place of peace. And I know it's not done, it came up today. And yeah, anyway, yeah, just there's a whole sort of cycle, it feels like that isn't of this time. Yeah. And you have attracted the circumstance to be able to face it and heal it because you're ready for that. It's an opportunity. Yeah, it's just doing my best to stay present with that, as you say that, and this. Because <laughs> my cynical self, I can hear that voice and at the same time just oh, but just trust, have the faith. Have the faith. I'm thinking of um, Evan Almighty, the movie, when his wife and kids leave because they can't stand it when he follows his calling. So they just take off. But then she meets God in the restaurant. And I think she asks, why? Why is this going on? You know, what? And God says, well, would, you, would I just... Um, because she had she had prayed for like closeness Shame. in the family yeah. or something like that. Right. Yeah. Would I just give it to you, or would I give you the conditions where you can learn it? You know, where you can experience it yourself. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah. it's very yeah. You know it. Yeah, and that's what you're going through. You have the conditions. Thing. You'd watch the film just for that one line. <laughs> Good. Yeah. It's that powerful. I know. I, I yeah. just blew me away when I. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a good movie. Maybe it's for you, Gareth and Laurie, as well. It's, yeah, very helpful. Mm. Yeah, well, I think God, <laughs> some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but God's got it wrong this time. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. never heard anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're just going through the conditions where you can learn trust and release lack. Belief in lack forever. Oh, <laughs> oh, fuck. 
You lucky dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks. I haven't got to that place yet, but it's like that felt sweet when you said that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's my, I'd really want that. Yeah. I think, and you talk about bottomless pit, you talk about injustice and lack. I think they are, they are connected or they're the same thing, actually. And you are, you know, okay. yeah, you're really looking at this and really letting God in to the bottomless pit so that yeah. God can take you out of it. Yeah, I think I, that feels true. And of course, doesn't always work out like I want it to or, or something like that. Yeah, or I want it now. It's like, I can't bear this right now. So, all that but stuff. That, yeah, that's what, that's what living in trust means. You know, it's not yeah. the way we want it to look. It's the way it looks. <laughs> and that. And to be in trust is to to be able to to take that to not say this moment should be different, something should be different for me to feel better. Yeah. Thanks for persisting. It's like something just opened a bit. Yeah, I read you. I can, I can feel like that moment just yeah just yeah allowing God in and just for a moment, allowing my righteousness to fall away. Beautiful. Yeah. It comes to my mind also, you know, illusions battle only with themselves. So, belief in injustice leads to righteousness, but they're both in your mind and it's a battle in your mind of the illusions, but spirit, spirit just gently overlooks it, takes your hand. I can see that at this moment. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can see it's just a battle in me. I can see that at this moment. Yeah. I really thank you. I really appreciate it. It just feels like a, a chink somehow into what feels like a very, well, I don't know, just defended part of me, a really resistant. Yeah. So it's good that you feel you, you can be in touch with this softness. This open place. Yeah. There is nothing to defend. Thank you. It's just really 
you know, I know, and I don't mean this, well, I probably mean it pessimistically, that it will close down again, but it's like at least <laughs> remembering there's another way. Yeah, and you will more and more. Remember it. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Thank you. So we can, yeah, just let ourselves relax into right where you are. Just feeling yourself more and more fully. knowing that this moment is for you. This moment is for you to experience yourself. You're always experiencing yourself. You're always experiencing the contents of your mind. So if you're experiencing something unpleasant, let yourself lay it down. So you can come into what is there, what is in you. And that is what this whole process, this whole journey is. It's just laying down what's false, laying down what isn't truth. over and over, as often as we need to. Because as we lay down what isn't true, 
as we lay down the false. The light shines. The happiness expands. The love glows. That is your nature to glow. Like a glow worm of love. Just shining.
and then gently coming back. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, really good being with you all. Yeah, yeah. till next time. <laughs> Have a good rest of your night, rest of your day.